All right, hello and welcome to our four day unit on the solar system. Hopefully you have your headphones plugged in and you're ready to listen and take notes. Feel free to pause this video anytime you wish so you can take notes or review something. Here we go. So the unit is the solar system. Our topic today is the inner planets of the solar system. Day one of four. Our objectives. Today you're gonna learn a little bit about the inner planets. You will also learn the evidence indicating that the planets are much closer to the Earth than the stars through planetary motions. So by observing the planets in the night sky, we've been able to figure out that the planets are much, much closer to us than the stars in the night sky. Here we go. So for your quick right for five points, what are some possible dangers astronauts would face traveling to other planets in our solar system? Have you ever heard of Mars Rover? What is it? Why do you think we first sent a robot to Mars rather than a human or an astronaut? Why do you think Earth is called the Goldilocks planet? So for five points, go ahead and write a, a sentence or two on one of those possible questions. Feel free, like I said, feel free to pause this video anytime. So Mercury, what do we know about Mercury? Well, it's closest to the sun. Like our moon, it has no atmosphere and therefore has many craters. It's the smallest planet. Surface temperatures can reach 450 degrees Celsius during the day, the side facing the sun, and negative 170 degrees Celsius at night, the side not facing the sun. One year is equal to 88 Earth days. So one revolution around the sun, one trip around the sun, takes Mercury 88 Earth days, about the same time as your summer break. Here we go. Venus. What do we know about Venus? Remember, you're not writing right now, so just listening. All right. Well, Venus is similar in size to Earth, so we call it Earth's sister planet. Very dense CO2, carbon dioxide rich atmosphere. Think of it as a very, very thick atmosphere made up of CO2. It rains sulfuric acid, which is similar in composition to battery acid, really nasty stuff. Its day is longer than its year. What does that mean? That means its rotation on its axis is longer than its revolution around the sun. So it has a day longer than its year. That means it spins very, very slow on its axis. Surface temperatures can reach 470 degrees Celsius, making it the hottest planet in our solar system. It has a severe greenhouse effect. So think of the greenhouse effect as what's happening to your car on a hot summer day. In Earth, we have a greenhouse effect. Sunlight passes through our atmosphere. The surface of the Earth absorb it, absorbs this sunlight and radiation and releases it as heat, okay? So these heat waves are released back into our atmosphere, warming our air. Some of that heat escapes. In Venus, its atmosphere is so dense and so thick that all of the sunlight coming through, all of the sunlight coming through hits Venus's surface, converted to heat, and is trapped. Almost 100% of that heat is trapped in its atmosphere, making it a very, very, very hot planet giving it a severe greenhouse effect. Like I said, a process similar to what's happening in your car on a hot summer day. Here we go. So Earth, good old Earth, home sweet home here. So the distance from the sun is equal to 150 million kilometers. We call this one AU or one astronomical unit. One astronomical unit is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers, or 150 million kilometers. We use AUs to measure distances in the solar system. The atmosphere of Earth is made up of 80% nitrogen and roughly 20% oxygen. We'll learn more about this later when we study our atmosphere. Meteorites that we find on Earth have been radiometrically dated at 4.6 billion years old. Okay, Mars. 
Well, Mars is red in color because of rust, or iron oxide on the weather rocks of its surface. So it's a rusty red planet. It has a polar ice cap, which increases in size during the Martian winter. The southern ice cap is believed to be made up of dry ice, or frozen carbon dioxide, CO2. The northern ice cap, is, we believe, is also made up of water. So there's water on the planet. And it once showed signs of running water. It has the largest volcano in the solar system called Olympus Mons. A little bit more about Mars. It has a large valley called Valle Marineris. A very thin atmosphere composed mostly of carbon dioxide, CO2. So the atmosphere is very thin. There's very little air molecules to breathe. And those air molecules are made of CO2. So you wouldn't be able to breathe on the planet because you need O2, oxygen, and CO2. Our bodies are not designed to breathe. It has two irregular shaped moons called Phobos and Deimos. So here are the moons right here. These moons aren't like our moon. They're not circular. These are captured asteroids. These are asteroids that strayed too close to the planet and got caught up in its uh, gravitational field. And they didn't slam into the planet. They just got too close and started orbiting the planet. Here's some features. Here's Olympus Mons, this massive volcano about the size of Arizona. It's called a shield volcano. Here's an artist's picture of what it would look like if you were on Mars. It's a very flat, sloping volcano, gently sloping. Here's what the sun would look like from Mars, possibly. In so, here's Olympus Mons, this huge volcano over here. And here's Valle Marineris, this big crack or canyon across almost half of the planet. It's a huge canyon. So, to this day, Mars rovers are ro running around the surface of Mars. They are powered by the sun. They have these really cool solar panels on them. They have cameras up here, these robotic arms. We've, we've sent about four Mars rovers to Mars. And to this day, they continue to explore and pick up rocks and search for life. And we're going to be learning a little bit more about Mars rover in one of the projects we do. Okay, so for your notes, on the left hand side you write under questions, you write what do we know about the inner planets, I made a table for you to write down. But before you write, okay, read the sentences, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Fill these words in in your answer bank in the top of your notes for credit. If you want credit for your notes, you have to determine which word best completes the sentence. When you're ready, pause this video and go ahead and take notes, please. I'm going to continue on to the next section. All right. Planets versus stars. What's the difference in the night skies? Well, it's hard to tell because planets look just like stars in the night sky. Small little bright points of light. So if planets look like stars in the night sky, how do we tell them apart? For one thing, the planets in our solar system are much, much closer to us than stars. Because they are closer, planets move across the night sky much faster. In fact, planets were discovered by tracking their motions across the night sky many, many years ago. So, for your notes, once again, under question, how do we tell the difference between planets and stars? And then in the answer section, this is what you write, but before you write, remember, use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. And record these answers, these words in your answer bank at the top of your notes. Pause this video, I'm gonna move on. Evidence for planetary motions. Planets in the night sky move across going west to east. So, they go from west to east. So if we were to look at Mars in the night sky, it would move from an, in a west to east fashion. We call this direction of movement prograde motion because planets generally move in a west to east fashion, prograde motion. 
However, many planets appear to reverse their direct direction and actually move in an east to west fashion. So they move in a prograde motion and then they move backwards. They reverse their direction and then move forward again. What's going on here? Planets don't really move backwards. What's happening? We call this backwards motion retrograde motion. And this is how we discovered planets. But why does this happen? Planets don't really move backwards, so what's going on here? If we were to look at Mars in the night sky, it might look something, do something like this, where it moves prograde, retrograde, and then prograde again. Well, so why do planets appear to move backwards? The answer has to do with how planets orbit the sun. Retrograde motion, or backwards motion, is due to the planets orbiting the sun at different speeds. Let's explore this in a little bit more detail. So here's an actual picture of Mars in the night sky, and you can see retrograde motion right here. So what's going on here? Well, notice on this animated GIF here that the Earth and the Moon orbit the sun at different speeds. Planets closer to the sun orbit faster, so we're going around the sun faster. Notice how Earth and Mars, like I said, orbit the Sun at different speeds. Which one orbits faster? Which one orbits slower? Well, Earth is going around faster. It's closer to the Sun. This is why planets appear to move backwards in relation to the background stars. Remember, stars are very far away. Planets are closer. So, like I said, let's explore this a little bit further. So let's say month one here. The Earth is here and Mars is here. And in the night sky, in the nighttime sky, okay, this is what we see. We see Mars here. Okay, in the night sky. Month two, okay, notice we've moved. This is our field of view. And in the night sky, this is where Mars now is. It's moved in our night sky in relation to the very far off distant stars in the night sky. And these stars pretty much don't move. Planets move faster, remember. Time three. Okay, Mars has moved again. Time four. Okay, notice something now. Earth is moving faster around the sun. We're catching up to it. Time five. Whoa, this is our, remember, this line represents our field of view. So, Mars appears to have moved backwards here. Time six. Now we're looking back at Mars in the night sky, and this is what we see. It's still moving backwards, retrograde motion. Okay, time seven. Oh, and now it's going prograde motion again. Time eight. Okay, so you can clearly see prograde motion and retrograde motion. So as Earth passed Mars by, we saw this period of retrograde motion, and then back to prograde motion. And finally, time nine, and that's it. So for your notes, what is retrograde motion is the question that goes in your question section down here. Anything below the question always goes in your answer section. Could be a table, diagram, whatever, picture. So this is what you write. But before you write, just a reminder, remember to complete the answer banks here by using the words that best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause it and write this down. I'm going to move on. Okay. Reminder, you can always write your own summaries. In fact, I encourage you to write your own summaries. You can do mine. Mine are perfectly fine. Here's what you write. Use the answer bank to help you out. And then down here, do not write. The inner planets below are out of order. Okay. Starting from the sun, draw the inner planets and put them in the correct order. Okay. So, go ahead and write this down. Do your own summary if you like. I'm going to stop the video now. You are finished with your homework. Congratulations.